Do we like Cthulhu sitting on top of all of the books that I'm going to be talking about? I do, so. <laughs> an intro, it's an intro. Uh, da, da, that was the Flintstones music. <laughs> Hi hey, I'm Morgan and today I'm going to be going into my July wrap up and letting you guys know about all the books that I read in the month of July. <sighs> I never said I was good at this. <laughs> so first I'm going to go into my stats for the month and then we're going to talk about the books in depth. You know how this goes. In the month of July I read a total of seven things which amounted to a total of 1,642 pages. Two of them were listened to on audiobook while the remaining five were physical books. All but three of these I personally own. The other three were borrowed from the library. And in terms of ratings, I rated one, of, one book three stars, one book four stars, one book 4.5 stars, and four books five stars this month. Holy shit. Taking those numbers and dividing it by seven books read, that amounts to a 4.5 average rating this month. Super good. And for my page average, if you take 1,642 pages and divide it by 31 days in July, that averages out to about 53 pages a day. Not my best, but not my worst, okay? There's been times where I've read no books for three months straight. Reading slumps hit a bitch different. Without further ado, I'm going to be doing mini reviews about each of these books, talking about the book I rated the lowest, working my way up to all of the five star books I read this month. The first book I'm going to be talking about I rated three out of five stars and that is Always and Forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han. This is the third and final book in the Laura Jean trilogy, the To All, I, to all the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy, the fucking riding K Peter Kavinsky's dick for three books straight series. This follows Laura Jean and her crew in her senior year of high school and everything that comes with that. I found this book highly forgettable. I just don't remember a damn thing that happened in this book. Like, yeah, there was drama. I feel like there were no conflicts that weren't resolved within like two pages of each other. And I found that really irritating. I really think that Lara Jean reads way more juvenile than an 18 year old girl about to start college. I find Lara Jean so delusional and yeah, I know that's like kind of one of her quirks is that she spends a lot of her life like reading books and kind of having this super romanticized way of how things are supposed to go. But I feel like that really clouds her mind from what's actually happening. <sighs> Y'all really are out here standing jars of mayonnaise like Peter Kavinsky, huh? I get it, I guess. So I loved the first book. I thought the second book was like okay there was like actual conflict in it i just don't think it needed to be a trilogy i don't think it was necessary i loved the fake dating aspect in the first book and like that was the main reason i read it because i'm a whore for fake dating i just feel like it fell flat like and it started to really decline after the first book i gave it three stars it was okay it was cute it tied things up in a nice neat little bow but like that's not how i like my books to hit so yeah sorry <laughs> next we're gonna talk about the one four star book i read now i have to move cthulhu don't fall and that is saga volume seven by brian k vaughn and fiona staples obviously this is the seventh volume in the saga graphic novel so i can't really talk about fucking anything other than this one was really really good it left off on the most heartbreaking note that I've ever read in a graphic novel. I was just so emotionally distraught reading this one. This is one of the first things that I read during the reading rush and like it really set the tone for the readathon if you ask me. If you don't know what the Saga graphic novel series is about, basically it's about a planet called Wreath and a moon called Landfall. I could be getting that screwed up. I always get them flip-flopped. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a dick. Um, it's about a planet and a moon, one's called Landfall, one's called Wreath, figure it out, and they've been at war with each other for like years, decades, centuries, a long ass time, and a character from the moon and a character from the planet, Marco and Alana, meet and they fall in love and they have a baby and they're on the run from 
bounty hunters and so many people like want their heads because if there's a symbol that people can love during this war then how's this war supposed to go on and it's about them and it's about their child and it's just them on the run through space and it's just so amazing it's so good the art is always perfect if you're not comfortable with like drug usage and like heavy sex like illicit or explicit sex uh you probably wouldn't like this uh because i literally just flipped to a page and saw a dick hello welcome to saga hi welcome to chili's i absolutely adored this series it's an amazing graphic novel and i just love it before we get into the slew of five star books we have a four and a half star book to talk about and that is eliza get a lot who <laughs> eliza and her monsters by francesca zappia i have been wanting to read this for the longest time and i'm so excited that i finally did for the reading rush this was on my very first book tubathon tbr i'm pretty sure and i finally read this the best way i can describe this in like one sentence it's it's fangirl by rainbow rowell but so much better i think everyone has talked this book to death like everyone knows what this book is about but if you don't hi this is about a girl named eliza and online she goes under the username lady constellation and she is the creator of this super popular webcomic called monster c but she does everything anonymously and in her real life she doesn't really have any friends she's actually like heavily picked on and she stays at home and like her family's really concerned about her and then she meets a new boy and his name is Wallace and she finds out that not only is he the most popular fan fiction writer for her webcomic but he's also been transcribing the webcomic into a novel format and they start this really beautiful friendship and kinship all with her like guarding this deep secret that she is the creator of something that means the world to him and it just it's so beautiful it talks about anxiety and depression in a really beautiful way and it also touches on the subject of grief and it was stunning the main reason i docked this po this book half a star is really general pacing issues but also eliza's anxiety isn't described on page as anxiety until the very end of the book and it's very apparent from the beginning like if you're a person with anxiety such as myself that she does have anxiety that i found really frustrating but obviously like she didn't know that about herself so like eh. i will say there's a trigger warning for a t talk about suicide and suicidal ideation and like a smidge of like attempt in suicide but not but like i just wanted to let you guys know that's there and also panic attacks are described pretty deeply in this book but i thought this was really phenomenal and i really 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 enjoyed it also the art and like the web comic aspect in this book is so good you ready to hear me talk about my five star books i'm ready the first one i'm going to talk about is the one that i read before the reading rush and it was a reread and that is the dream thieves by maggie Seabotter. hi it's tipsy editing morgan here um i totally fucked up and thought that I read The Dream Thieves in July when I totally read it in June. I did have a seventh book and it was a five star book, but it wasn't The Dream Thieves. It was Cicada by Sean Tan. It's like a 36 page picture book that Ian and I read together at $2 Radio Headquarters and I got real emo over this little business Cicada and I gave it five stars and it was really great and really touching and very sad. It was like 36 or 32 pages, I can't remember, something like that according to Goodreads. But when I was filming this I totally forgot about that book and remembered that I read The Dream Thieves in June but thought that I read that in July. I'm a buffoon. The next two five star reads I'm going to talk about are graphic novels. It just makes sense to talk about them at the same time and those are Sagas Volume 8 and 9 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. I'm not Okay. These were so much. I'm just, I, I have a lot of feelings. I need volume 10 right now. Ah! We're here to talk about the last book that we're going to be talking about in my July wrap up. My last five star read for July and that was the Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I predicted this to be a five star read around this time like 
two years ago. Yeah, that wasn't wrong. Thank you to every person that was like, Morgan, why the fuck haven't you read The Hate You Give? You need to read The Hate You Give. I read it and I loved every second of it and simultaneously was so heartbroken and upset every second of this book. I primarily listened to this on audiobook and I really really enjoyed the narrator. This obviously follows our main character Star and she meets up with one of her childhood friends Khalil at a party and there is a bit of a scuffle and they leave and are stopped by the police shortly after and Khalil is shot and killed by the officer and it's all about star having this inner conflict of if she should speak up and let it be known that she's the witness star has this inner conflict because she goes to a really pristine like primarily white school like she's one of maybe like three black people at her school or just people of color in general and then she also lives in garden heights which is a more predominantly like black poor neighborhoods. So there's a lot of comment on race and oppression and of course systemic oppression especially by the police as well as socioeconomic status and class and what that means for her and like this book was just so beautiful and so touching and grounding and I watched the movie right after I finished it and I was just a mess. It's just so heartbreaking to read stories like this and to know that things like this are happening. I know that I'll never have to face something like that as a white woman, which I hate, but reading books like this really helps me see what that is like and how terrifying it is and I wouldn't be a true ally to the Black Lives Matter community and to my black friends and to people that are being harmed by the police and are being targeted if I didn't read books like these and just pretend that things like these weren't happening. I love this book. I love everything that Angie Thomas is bringing to light about things like this. Angie Thomas really captured the voice of a young angry girl so beautifully and I just I just loved it. But you guys there you have it. That is my July wrap up. I'm so happy to just be here filming. I hope you like this little setup that Ian made for me. I think it's really sweet. If you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you feel so inclined. Leave me some comments talking about what you read in the month of July, what your favorite book of the month was, what your least favorite book was. I don't know. Let me let me know all the things. And if you want to see more of my content and more of my mug, you are more than welcome to subscribe. I upload frequently question mark and like i said my name is morgan this is morgie reads i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and happy reading okay bye